in the royal quarter a large space adjacent to and in service of the museum, the museum, a Greek style temple comprising a peripatos uh, walk in the uh, style of the Athenian Academy, gardens, a reading room, meeting rooms, and lecture halls, and spacious shelves or pigeonholes, we should say, um, for the collection of scrolls, um, or whose number at some point um, is said to have exceeded more than 700,000 titles. The considerable overflow uh, of these papyri was housed in the temple of Serapium, Serapeion, an erstwhile magnificent structure around what today is known as Pompey's Pillar. In 391 AD, so about three, 600 years later, Christians launched a final assault uh, on pagan intellectuals and their institutions and destroyed the Serapeum and its library, leaving just the lonely pillar standing. The site is now little more than rubble, pocked by trenches and holes with a few sphinxes, originally from Heliopolis, a surviving nilometer and the pillar, the only uh, ancient monument, as far as I know, remaining whole and standing today in Alexandria. Alexandria, with its library, its medico-philosophical schools, called Academia or Museum, its facilities for the study of astronomy, geography, zoology, etc., understood itself as the successor to the Platonic Academy of Athens. While in its beginnings, Alexandrian scholarship was famous not least for its expertise um, in textual criticism of ancient epic, particularly, of course, uh, Homerus, and poetical uh, literature, its main areas of research in late antiquity became philosophy, uh, medicine, and the natural sciences. These were the subjects that were taught in the Alexandrian schools of three centuries preceding the uh, Muslim conquest of Egypt, and their curriculum was to dominate al-ulum al-qadima in early and classical Islam. Thus, we find among the vast corpus of scholarly texts translated from Greek into Arabic, no integral uh, Greek tragedy or comedy or poetry or historiography uh, because their Sitz im Leben, their sociological relevance, had already lost much of its impact in later Alexandrian society. But we have almost the whole oeuvre of the classical medical authors, Hippocrates of Galen of Pergamon, Rufus, Paulus of Aegina and Oribasius, as well as of late Alexandrian authors like John Philopodos and others. For the Materia Medica, uh, pharmacology, um, Dioscurides is the leading authority and his writings were translated and transmitted too. In philosophy, we have first and foremost Aristotle as Al Ma'mun's dream, and Ibn Khaldun's account put him forward, whose entire works were studied and commented upon, but also from a later phase of reception, the Platonic Dialogues, the commentaries on the writings of both authors, Plotinus under the name uh, of the uh, theology of Aristotle ascribed to Aristotle, but in reality written by Plotinus, and Neoplatonic writings in the form of adaptations of Plotinian writings, of excerpts from Proclus's Elementatio Theologica and the Proclian Liber de Causis, in Arabic, Al-Khair Al-Mahd, uh, the, the pure good, metaphysics, uh, basically. An important vehicle for the transmission of the lives and teachings of ancient philosophers was the vast corpus of the sayings of or pieces of wisdom, hekam, under such titles as Nawadir al-Falasifa or Muhtar al-Hekam or Siwan al-Hekma, uh, so popular because these collections 
easily mingled with the tradition of the gnomological teachings of the ancient Orient on the one hand and ideals of classical Arabic literature, uh, secular or religious, on the other side. We even find uh, pieces of hadith next to uh, hikam in, in given uh, collections of this type. For astronomy, the, the so-called al-magist of, uh, in Arabic, al-magisti um, of Ptolemy of Alexandria, not a member of the ruling dynasty, was the most fundamental source. For mathematics, uh, translations began with the elements of Euclid. He figures in, uh, in Ibn Khaldun's account. Um, and the introduction to arithmetics by Nicomachos of Gerasa, that's uh, today's Gerash in, in Jordania. We should not forget that a large undercurrent of the occult sciences very popular both in late antiquity and early Islam, was also received and worked upon. Astrology, alchemy, the signs of talismans, physiognomy, in Arabic, ilm al-firasa, uh, dream interpretation, ilm al-tabir, um, and so on. So this is the program, the curriculum, that was taught in Alexandrian schools and whose uh, copious literature was translated into Arabic. Now let us next ask what was the initial interest of the Abbasids in the Hellenistic heritage. Al-Ma'mun, as you will remember, was interested in the good, Al-Hasan. Ibn Khaldun tells us uh, that the Muslims became versed in many different crafts and sciences. I'm quoting rather literal, literal, literally, then they desired to study the philosophical disciplines. While al Ma'mun's purported dream obviously is carried by a certain ideological tendency, um, Ibn Khaldun's account certainly contains a kernel of truth in the sense that the newly formed Islamic civilization was almost overwhelmed by an influx of new crafts and sciences. Sina'at wa ulum, not only the Hellenistic heritage, but it must be stressed, Sasanian administrative skills and political wisdom, Indian scholarship, old Syriac tra traditions, and ancient Egyptian scientific and religious traditions. It was this wealth of new information that Muslim scholarship tried to come to terms with, and the various early attempts of classifying this information to put all this <coughs> store of knowledge into some order. You could call these works, with, uh, you, you could name it them with a modern term, uh, encyclopedia, maybe. These um, uh, type of uh, encyclopedias are, to my, in my opinion, first-class testimonies to Islamic scholarship in classical Islam. Now, you find on the backside of my um, handout two such examples, one taken from Al-Farabi's uh, famous uh, Ihsa al-Ulum, catalog uh, or census <laughs> of the sciences, and the other one um, Maratib al-Ulum, the, um, I don't know, Maratib, the, the steps <laughs> um, of the sciences by Ibn Hazm al-Andalusi. Um, and they are meant to show you three things, basically. One, the enormous range of scholarship shaping Islamic culture. Two, the specific genius of the two authors, Al-Farabi and Ibn Hazm al-Andalusi, and you can trust me, there are more authors like, like these, the same caliber, like uh, Avicenna um, and uh, the Ikhwan al-Safan and other authors, um, in integrating, the, the genius was my word, in integrating uh, al-Ulum and Naqliya, let's say, for the uh, sciences centered around uh, the Islam, Islamic faith, um, 
and the Arabic language with the Al-Ulum uh, Al-Qadima. Uh, and thirdly, um, I think these uh, um, testimonies uh, show certain traces of the Aristotelian heritage. Perhaps it is these classifications of the sciences that is the farthest reaching manifestation of Hellenistic scholarship. It has its roots in Greek logic, Aristotelian logic and his commentators, and a very nice uh, idea uh, um, once um, 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 uh, say, uh, written by Franz Rosenthal, um, who remarked, um, they may have these, these classifications, um, may have their epistemological drawbacks because such classifications tend to create the illusion that what one has classified, one has fully grasped and done with. <laughs> I find this very, uh, a very good um, idea. Still, notwithstanding um, these are precious documents are, and, and are precious um, um, manifestations of uh, the endeavor of early Muslim scholarship <laughs> to come to systematic terms with the rich um, influx of the crafts and the sciences. I shall not translate the two passages for you, but simply point out the way of argument of Al-Farabi and Ibn Hazm. Farabi puts the science of language, as you see, Al um, Lisan, that's line five, hmm? uh, the science of language side by side with that of logic. Both are disciplines concerning a faculty common to all human beings and cannot be claimed by a particular faction. This is very, um, very important for uh, Al-Farabi in particular. Um, um, logic, the philosopher Al-Farabi says, corresponds to grammar since the relation of logic to the intellect and the intelligibilia, nice word, in Arabic it's al-maqulad, those things which can be imagined. Um, or not imagined, uh, thought, let's say, or um, um, conceived, okay? Um, uh, the, um, the relation of logic is analogous to the relation of grammar to language and its utterances. Like language and logic, the mathematical sciences, those are the four um, uh, uh, usual, arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and musical theory. In this um, context, complemented by optics, uh, the science of the weights, you have something like athqal in your text, and, uh, um, and mechanical devices, hayal, so you have a seven uh, fold, are universal. Particularly interesting is Al-Farabi's pairing of physics and metaphysics, or theology, al-ilahi, <coughs> another measure to unify Aristotelian and Islamic traditions under one common neutral denominator, the world as a whole, one could say. He does the same in his fifth and last category, linking the theological disciplines, uh, fiqh and kalam, to politics, to worldly politics, as uh, one of the best um, uh, experts on uh, Al-Farabi, Mohsin Mahdi, writes, Al-Farabi seems to be resigned to the multiplicity of lawgivers and religious and juridical disciplines and theologies. Religion is defined in a perfectly neutral manner, and so are the religious sciences. Second, jurisprudence and theology are not substitutes for political science or alternative uh, approaches to the study of political life." End of quote. Knowledge, one may, one may sum up, ilm, is one and universal. Now, Ibn Hazm presents a different, um, equally uh, ingenious system of the sciences. He divides them into those that are 
particular to every ummah, to every nation you might translate, and those with universal uh, validity. Um, those that are particular are, in his, uh, in his uh, numbering three, Sharia history, interestingly. You know, the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, individual history of a given ummah, and language, of course. And the four uh, universal uh, sciences he names uh, astronomy, arithmetic, medicine, and philosophy going on, in, uh, or defining philosophy, including knowledge of all matters as they are according to their definition from the highest genera to the individual particulars, as well as knowledge of di div divine matters, which is, um, you could call it either uh, metaphysics or theology. Again, this author maintains the unity of all knowledge, only marking the border between universal sciences and the Ummah related sciences, adding, however, that all religious laws, with the exception of Islamic Sharia, are now, at the time of Ibn Hazm writing, and since some time before him, invalid. I think his term is Bartil or Ibtal or something. I'm quoting. Hence, it is necessary to concentrate on the true religion, religious law, and on everything that can deepen our knowledge of it. The science of Sharia is divided into four parts. Now, this is, uh, again, um, uh, as we know it, the science of the Quran, the science of the Hadith, Fiqh, and Kalam. So this is one more important factor that prompted early Islamic culture to make use of Hellenistic scholarship to bring the wealth of new knowledge into a coherent system to unify Elm. Other equally important factors are more mundane disciplines like medicine, pharmacology, astronomy, not to forget astrology, were seen as eminently practical. And if we read the history of the translation of Hellenistic writings correctly, it is these disciplines that aroused uh, the interest of the Abbasid rulers in the first place. But Galenic medicine, for instance, is itself philosophical structured, uh, uh, as is the discipline of the macrocosmos, the, uh, uh, the teaching of physics and of cosmology. Thus, according to a um, uh, colleague, uh, Len Goodman, what was sought by the Abbasid rulers, what was sought was what was useful, but the concept of the useful was itself becoming enlarged. Translation were undertaken initially to learn the therapy of for a given disease to solve a practical problem of geometry or engineering to make available methods by which future events could be predicted or human fortunes made secure to acquire tools for refuting a theological adversary. But the Greek works bear with them their own context, assumptions, cross-references, -refer above all, their own problematic. One work leads to another. Insensibly, pragmatic interest breeds academic expertise, the drive to completeness of scholarship or system. And this uh, end of quote um, uh, of um, the book by um, uh, Goodman, and this is, you remember, exactly what Ibn Khaldun means when he says, I quote again, the Muslims read those works and studied their contents, their desire to obtain the rest of them grew. Wazdadu hirsan ala zafar bima baqiya minha. Three, what were the ways of transmission of knowledge from Alexandria to Baghdad? I, you will be relieved, I must be brief with this section because not really much is known about this uh, question. It is still a matter of dispute how direct and continuous the scholar tradition from Alexandria to Baghdad was. Older scholarship relies 
on the accounts of Muslim authorities like Al-Farabi, the same uh, author we've just met, who construed uh, an uninterrupted teaching tradition of Aristotle work, Aristotle's works uh, from Alexandria to Baghdad with Antioch 